Hey, what's going on guys? Dan with Gear Focus back again. It's been a while. I got a quick video for you today. We're gonna to take a look at the Canon R3 versus the Canon R5. I got the chance to use both of these cameras at a wedding a few weeks ago, so I just wanted to share that experience with you so I could help you decide whether the R3 or the R5 is right for you. So for the sake of today's comparison, we're gonna be looking at three main factors. We're gonna be looking at the usability, we're gonna look at the low light, and we're also gonna look at the autofocus performance. First, let's take a look at the usability, starting with the physical sizes of the cameras. The R3 is significantly heavier. It is a larger body with a larger screen and a larger battery, so therefore it's gonna be significantly heavier. The R3 weighs in at 1,015 grams, which is just over two pounds, whereas the R5 comes in at 738 grams. Over a full day, that can add up pretty quickly. However, most of that weight comes from the larger size of the R3 and the larger battery of the R3. And with that, the R3's battery life is significantly better than the R5. I was able to use one single E19 battery, which is like that 1DX style battery, on the R3 for the entire day. I didn't even have to change it out. Whereas on the R5, we had to swap batteries like two or three times. So knowing that you don't really have to worry about it, is a big plus for me. Now at this wedding, I was the lead photographer. And when that happens, typically I end up shooting both photo and video. I'm kind of directing a team of people while also shooting the majority of the photos for the day. So I was using the R3 mainly for photo. However, I was switching back and forth between photo and video. And I think that's where the R3 really, really shines. The switch on the back of the camera, the dedicated photo and video switch on the back of the camera, really sets this camera apart in my opinion. It switches back and forth so fast that you barely even know that it's switching modes. And it also goes right back to the last settings that you had. So for instance, if you were shooting slow-mo video, say 4K 120, and you had all of your settings and your shutter speed all set up for that, and then you real quick wanted to snap a couple pictures, you flip that switch and it's gonna go right into where your photo mode was. And then if you wanna go right back to shooting slow-mo, just flip the switch and it's already got all of your settings still there. It really makes doing both photo and video at the same time really, really easy. Now, speaking of slow-mo, both cameras do have 4K 120. However, I did think that the R3's slow-mo just rendered a little bit better to me. Now, both of these cameras do shoot raw video. The R5 shoots 8K raw and the R3 shoots 6K raw. To me, having 6K at 60 frames per second is a little bit more usable than having 8K at 30 frames per second. I understand that 8K is like the next big thing, but for me personally, it just doesn't matter. I usually don't need that much resolution, even coming from a wedding. I would rather have the higher frame rate of the 6K 60 versus the 8K at 30. It's really resolution versus frame rates, and frame rates to me are more important. So now let's talk about the low light of these two cameras. And I'm just gonna come out and say it right away. The R3 is much better at low light than the R5. And the reason for that is the two different sensors. While the R5 does have a higher megapixel sensor, it's a 45 megapixel sensor versus the 24 that the R3 is, the R3's individual pixels are gonna be larger. It's kind of like the, the Ari effect, right? Where like Ari's sensors don't have as many pixels in them, but they're larger so they look better. And that's the exact same thing that's going on here with the R3. Now that's not to say that the R5 is bad in low light, it's just when you put it next to the R3, it's not as good. The R5 is still great in low light, you can still push it. I was able to get it up to around 8,000 and still able to use the image with a little bit of noise reduction. So that's not to say that the R5 is bad at low light, it's just that the R3 is significantly better. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the autofocus of these two cameras. Both of these cameras have 1,053 phase detection points and it uses the same autofocus system. So for all intents and purposes, the autofocus performance on both of these cameras is gonna be about the same. Now, the only place where I noticed a little bit of a difference there was in the low light. And that is just because the camera can literally see better in low light on the R3 versus the R5. But both of these cameras have incredible autofocusing systems 
systems, Canon's new autofocus is out of this world. I haven't had a chance to use the Sony, so I can't you know, compare the two Canon and the Sony. I can't compare the two autofocus systems, but from my experience, the Canon autofocus system has never let me down and it just keeps getting better and better. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about here is photos. It's pretty obvious to me that the R3 is tailored more towards photographers and the R5 is tailored more towards people who focus on video. That's not to say that either one is bad at either one, but I would say that if you're a photographer, the R3 is definitely the way to go. The R3 has a lot of the new Canon photography features, like the eye tracking autofocus. So when you're inside the viewfinder, when you have the camera up to your face, it'll track your eye to move your focus point around in the image. It's really kind of trippy when you're using it because you're not used to it, but it's a really, really cool feature. Also, that 30 frames per second electronic shutter on the R3 is just insane. When you have that enabled, it's almost impossible to take just one photo if you're in high speed continuous. Now, the dual grip on the R3 is also something that I personally really like because it allows me to shoot in vertical really, really easily. And with platforms like Instagram really shifting things to that vertical 9 by 16 format, having a vertical camera already built in is a really, really nice feature. Now, lastly, the R5 comes in at $3,800, whereas the R3 comes in at about $6,000. So if you're looking at either one of those cameras, that is something to keep in mind. The R5 is significantly cheaper than the R3. So if that's a big factor to you, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Now, if you're looking to get either one of these cameras, I know that both of these cameras are listed on Gear Focus as of the filming of this video. So if you're looking for either one of those, I'll put the links to those down in the description down below. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Thanks for having me back on the Gear Focus channel. I really appreciate it. I really enjoyed being back here. Let us know down in those comments down below which camera you're gonna be picking up and which camera you like best. And if you have any other photo or video needs, feel free to check out www.gearfocus.com. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and remember Gear Focus is always here to help you feature passion.